Okay, so for the next part of your project, you're going to be setting some visual um, characteristics for your views. And so I'm going to go through and um, show you how each one of these views was created. So we're going to start with the plan right here. So I'm just going to pick this guy. And the way that the plans are generated are through the levels. So if I go look at my elevations, so let's pull up a little bit, and I'm going to go to my south elevation here. That plan is going up four feet from this plan to level and sectioning across that model, right? So if I close my hidden windows and then go to my plan to schematic and window tile and zoom, if I come in and move this level, right, it's going to change that cut, right? So you can see it getting higher, or now it's going into that circle, right? So basically four feet above wherever the level is is where the section cut is happening. Now I'm going to delete this level. And it's going to give me an error message that two of my views will be deleted, which it's going to get rid of plan two, and plan two schematic will also be deleted. So when you delete a level, it's actually de deleting a view range that's creating a plan view. So um, when I click OK, you'll see those disappear. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new level. So I'm going to go to Architecture and Level. And I'm going to start at the tail end because that's where it usually where it begins. And then I'm going to left click and drag over and it's going to create a new level. And you'll see Plan 4 show up over here. Okay. I'm going to go to Modify to stop the Level command because it wants to create more. And I'm going to zoom in. You're going to notice that my level is not the same as the other levels. It's a different type. So to make it the same, I'm going to pick it, go to the Type Selector here, and pick Cross Century Gray, and now it's the same. All right, so if we go to Plan 4, we've got this plan now being cut four feet above where that level is. So if I'm in the plan... I can scroll down and there is a view range. So if you look at the view range, the bottom is level plan four, so that's zero. The cut plane is at four feet above that, and the top of the range is at seven foot six. And it's only looking down to level floor, so it's not looking below that. So if we wanted to see below that, we would have to come down here and select plan one or unlimited. Okay, So that's just the view depth that's controlling it. Now, I can come in here and I can change the name. So I'm going to go in here and rename this to Plan 2. And hit Enter. And it's going to say, would you like to re rename the corresponding level and views? So if I say yes, and I go back to my south, my south, it will rename that. right? So everything is connected in Revit if you choose for it to be. OK, so let's close that. Now, I've got this one floor plan, and it's the default um, Revit floor plan, which is not totally unattractive. Like, if you zoom in, there is a slight difference in variation of the line weights, but it's not very nice. Like, we've got all these sections everywhere, but I do like to have one view where I can see all my mess, like the sections and the scope boxes and everything. So what you would want to do is you would want to make a copy of this and set up the view differently. So I'm going to right click on plan view and go to duplicate view and duplicate. Okay, so now I have a plan to copy and I'm going to rename that plan to schematic. Okay, so now I have two views that look exactly the same and I can start to change one of them. There are lots of ways to change the um, visual um, character of your view, we're going to use the visibility graphics. So first things first, I just don't want to see this crop box and I don't want to see, actually the crop box is fine, I just don't want to see these um, section cuts. So I'm going to select one of them, right click, and I'm going to go to hide in view category. So it's going to hide all those. Another way to do that, I'm going to control Z here, is to select one of them and type VH. So VH. So, okay. So we've got that going. Now let's go ahead and put a fill in here and a surface and maybe turn on some shadows or something. So to change 
the fill and the line weight, we're going to use the visibility graphics, which controls the graphics for each individual view. So it's only going to change this view. I'm going to type VV, and it's going to bring up the visibility graphics overrides. And so I'm going to come down to generic models, because when we linked it, that's what we used as the in-place component. And I'm going to go to my cut patterns, and I'm going to set an override of a blue that's maybe a light blue, right? A periwinkle, perhaps. And I'm going to set it to solid fill. And then I'm going to change my cut lines, and I'm going to make those significantly thicker. So I'm going to make them, let's make them 12. And I'm also going to make them a gray color. And click OK, and click OK, and click OK. And so if we zoom in, you're going to see um, the line weight is gray. And let's see if the line weight is actually listening to us. So I'm just going to go to VV. And let's try to kind of pull this over. I'm going to change the line weight. It's not going to be, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to change it. And let's change the line weight to 16 and hit OK and then hit Apply. So it is, it's updating that line weight to thicker and thicker, right, when we change it. So I'm going to keep it maybe up at 14 and click OK and OK. All right. Now maybe we want this elevation line to be gray, so I'll hit VV. And right here under generic models is projection, which is elevation and lines. So if I go there and I change it to gray, click OK and click OK and apply, hey, nothing happens because there's a weird little thing in Revit uh, when you import something that you actually have to change the elevation lines in the object styles, which is a little strange. But bear with me. If I go to Manage, Object Styles, and I go to Imported Objects, this is that import that we brought in. And I'm going to change the category notation of zero and rename it something so I know what it is. Curve. Okay. And then I'm going to change the line color to gray here. And there's actually the line projection. And I'm going to click OK. And you're going to see it's going to update. So that's a little quirk with the things with the imports like the SATs and whatnot. Now I can also go to Shaded View. So you get a little shade in there. If you go to a Shaded View or turn shadows on, it will print as a raster. So if you want a vector plot, you have to use Hidden Line, um, which is maybe not as compelling, but you know it does work quite well. Uh, for more explanatory drawings. So let's say that we're done with this, but we want to update our other views, and we have to go in and change all those things. Um, one other thing I want to update is I want to make this 3 seconds of an inch scale. And so instead of having to go change all the other views that I want to change, I can right click and go to Create View Template from View. And I'm going to type in plan schematic blue. Okay. And it's going to save that in my view templates and it's going to show me everything that it's going to save to that. So we were actually just working in the visibility graphics override model, but there's all sorts of millions of other things that you can set. I like to remove the view scale so it doesn't rescale things when it applies. So I'm going to click OK. Now, if I go to plan two, I can right click on it and go to Apply Template Properties and pick that plan schematic blue and it will update it, right? So you see the lines get a lot thicker, it turns blue, right? And then if I wanted to change them both back to something else, I could select them and go to Apply View Template and I have a schematic plan and I could click OK and now, you know, they're gray, right? So I could pick them again apply view template and go back to blue. So you can create view templates that have different settings and apply them. Plans go to plans, sections go to sections. Um, all right, so that's um, almost all we want to do. The next thing we want to do is scroll down and actually put this on our composition sheet. So I'm just going to double on that composition sheet and I'm going to come back up to the top and pull that plan to schematic onto the sheet and left click, and there it is. Now it's a little goofy, like the size of the crop region is really big, and it's got these like 
elevation markers in it. It's a bit of a mess because we haven't cropped it. You see how these others are all really nicely cropped to their sizes? This one is not cropped. So I'm just going to delete it from the view and go back and crop it. So um, if I go back to my plan two schematic, I want it to crop to this scope box that I've created. So in order to do that, it's actually quite simple. When you're in the plan, you can scroll down in the parameters and there's a scope box option. And if you go to the pull down, there's only one. And so now if I do that, it automatically does the crop box to that exact same size and it does it to the exact same size um, for all of the, the views that have that scope box associated with it in the dialog box. Um, the other thing you can do if you like is turn off the re crop region. So now I can go back to my composition page, go back up to my view and pull my schematic onto the view, right? So we'll just place that right there. Now my last issue is this unattractive title. So to get rid of that, I pick the view, go to the pull down here for viewport and just say no title. So now that guy is placed in there and we'll go through and redo the section and um, some of these other guys in the next one.